Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. Three years into the pandemic, most of us have had at least one bout of COVID, experiencing various degrees of illness. It's usually not that pleasant, but we recover. But for hundreds of thousands of Australians, the symptoms can last for months. Today, we visit a long COVID clinic that's so busy, it's having to turn away some patients suffering from the condition. So this is the front desk and yeah, this is hi. Dina. Hi, Dina. Dina's our, um, round this way. Yeah. We might go the back way here. So okay, yes. Some patients, yes. Some patients are in there, yeah. And then in here we've got um, Ellie, who's our amazing clinical nurse specialist. And she's, she's got someone in there. She's yeah. got someone in there now. Yeah, so my name's uh, Associate Professor Anthony Byrne. I'm, I'm a respiratory physician that works here at St Vincent's um, and the co-leader at the Long COVID Clinic. Mm, and we're going to talk to one of your patients in a minute, but just give me a sense of how busy since you've opened has it been of the first year? Re- really busy. Yeah, right. Yeah, so it, it's, it, you would say that, um, you know, we were oversubscribed, you know, that we had uh, hundreds of patients that were referred by general practitioners. They all need to have... A GP referral, as would be the case for every specialist review. Yeah, we we had the capacity to see sort of six to eight patients in the morning here in a clinic and then sort of a a similar sort of thing on a Wednesday. And then we operate that every week. Mm. You can, if you do the maths, there's a limited number of patients that you can see each week and each month. And if you've got hundreds of referrals, Mm. then they need to be triaged. And that's incredibly frustrating, oh, yeah. you could imagine, for patients. When, just, just tell me more about that triage then. What are the symptoms that they need to be showing to actually get in? That, look, everyone's worthy, right? Yeah, right. And, and every, every patient's different. Mm. Um, there's common symptoms. You know, the top three would be fatigue and lethargy, brain fog, you know, this cognitive dysfunction, mm. chest symptoms like breathlessness, chest pain. And then there's another other ones like post-exertional fatigue. So they, you know, they do something, go go for a walk for 20 minutes, and then they're just bunged up mm. for the next two days. We've done an analysis on the patients that we've seen, and we've seen hundreds of patients over the past nearly one year, and mainly they're they're everyone from 16 years to over 80, but on average 30 to 40 year olds, mm. and and on average they're people that are not able to work. Mm. or do their usual activities, you know, mainly work um, because of these symptoms. So Mm. they're really struggling. So how do you diagnose long COVID then? Or is it diagnosable? Yeah, look, it's it's actually quite simple to diagnose in a sense. Um, because the, 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 there's a definition, there's different definitions, mm. but the definition is that there's persistence of symptoms beyond 12 weeks. Someone's had COVID and they've got ongoing symptoms that weren't there before or they're worse now. Mm. So, so that, for a GP, should be quite simple. The GP knows the patient and the patient can tell you if they're worse or not. Mm. <laughs> but the other important thing is, are these symptoms explained by something else? And what we, what we try and do, actually, in our management and investigation of long COVID patients is that we look to diagnose um, comorbid conditions Mm -hmm. that the patient might not be aware of, you know, sleep apnea, Mm -hmm. depression, um, asthma. And we know how to treat those things. And so we can give treatment for those comorbid conditions that might have been undiagnosed. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, the patient will get better. Mm -hmm. Um, But we also look at this holistically. You know, we look at um, one of the big reasons for having rehabilitation physicians is because it, it's very much rehabilitation. It's getting back to work in that that is, you know, putting a label on it saying, yes, this is long COVID. Mm-hmm. For your employer, you've got long COVID. You, you are, we've done a medical assessment. It's very clear that you cannot work full time in your usual role. Mm. So, so doing all of that is very practical and useful, even though it's not, here's take this pill to fix long COVID. Yeah, so you're diagnosing it. Yeah. That's not fixing it. Is well, it fixable? It's both. It's both diagnosing, putting a you know an official label that mm. yes, this is long COVID, mm. but how much is long COVID and how much are other things, 
and how much of the other things can we diagnose and manage mm. and in so doing improve your overall condition, mm-hmm. which is obviously what we're trying to do. Um, and and most, look, most people's trajectory is one of improvement, but it's, you know, the word that we use is glacial. Like it's, it's really slow and mm. it's up and down. So, but most of the patients will have an improvement over 12 months. Tell me, you've just been with Paul this morning and we're going to talk yeah. to him in, in a minute, but give me a sense of the, his treatment then just so I've got an idea of what you actually do day in, day out with people yeah, like but, Paul. Yeah, so Paul's not, not, an, he's a, not an uncommon patient that mm. we see. So, so Paul's a guy that is, is a gentleman with, you know, long COVID. That he'd had a diagnosis of long COVID made now over a year ago. Mm. He, uh, he unfortunately suffered ongoing debilitating symptoms of breathlessness and chest pain, mm. as well as fatigue and sort of this brain fog. So pretty classical top three. You know, he had some symptoms and some lung function that was in keeping with an asthma type picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it wasn't simple asthma and he'd never had asthma, mm-hmm. but he had symptoms of asthma and lung function changes of asthma. So, you know, to put it simply, if it walks like a duck and mm-hmm. quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Mm-hmm. So why not give him treatment for asthma, mm-hmm. which is what we did. Um, and so we put in place a management plan for his asthma and some additional investigations, a letter back to the GP, which is really important. So his lung function is dramatically better. Mm-hmm. So he can blow out more than a litre mm-hmm. in one second more than what he could four months ago. Mm. Yeah. All right. So should we go and find Paul? Yeah. We should yeah. Find and, Paul. and talk to him. I think that would be useful. Okay. okay. Hello. Paul. How, how much? Oh, hello, Paul. How are you? Um, so, yeah, this is Samantha. Yeah, hi, hi Samantha. I'm Sam Paul. from the ABC. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. Okay. All right, do you want to sit down? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I can just sit here. I mean, when did you first realise that there was something not quite right going on with you? I think it was about four weeks after I became ill mm. and my partner had recovered and I was still feeling terrible. Yeah, right. I was suspicious then, mm. but after a couple of months, I realised it was a real problem. What was, the, what was happening to you? Uh, constantly tired, constantly getting headaches, um, terrible memory. Right. Um, aches and pains. Gosh. The fatigue was the most tedious part. So what, fatigue as in you couldn't get up out of bed or what? Just describe I, that fatigue for me. I could get up out of bed. Mm. By the time I'd showered and got dressed, I felt like I needed to go back to bed. Uh, yeah. yeah, so how long far are you in now? 13 months. Right. Now. It's obviously deeply affected the way you live. Uh, look, it is very hard. I don't try not to think too much about it because it doesn't do much good because no. thinking about it doesn't make it go away. But it, it make, makes you a lot less active. I just couldn't do things, you know. And I couldn't go on outings and you know, I'd have to just take it easy a lot more. But, and it's very frustrating because you look fine and my friends would say, you look 100%, look really well. Mm. But when you're unable to go too far without feeling exhausted... Yeah. That's boring. I mean, the clinic is so busy, isn't it? it it's, it's just incredibly busy, yeah. yeah. And it's very hard on the staff. And yeah. I, I have to say I'm astonished the government hasn't funded long COVID clinics all over the place because there must be people... If I had to work physically, I wouldn't have been working for six to eight months at least, yeah. maybe longer, and that would have been pretty devastating. Yeah. All right. Paul, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, I sir. appreciate it. Are you getting better already at treating this? I think we're getting more experienced. Mm. I think there's an upskilling that needs to occur mm. and training that needs to occur. And even with our very experienced psychologists and physiotherapists um, that have come from a pain, chronic pain, you know, space, mm. to then transfer to a long COVID space involves sort of uh, on-the-job training, mm. essentially. Um, if, you, if the GPs are going to do this, and I think they, they need to do this, they need to be trained in how to do it and they need to have the appropriate models of care to do it because you can't, 
You can't evaluate a long COVID patient and do all those things in five minutes. No. It doesn't work. Like, you know, it's, gee, it's criminal to think that after all this experience that we don't have clarity mm. from the state and federal government about what's happening with long COVID clinics yeah, right. in New South Wales or elsewhere. So in terms of, you know, we're still going to be operational in a year's time or two years' time, and we would hope so, yes. but we don't have that in writing. No, and um, it's not, I mean, it's not going away. There is a parliamentary inquiry into this. Exactly. So, I mean, obviously you'd be lobbying them. We need this. This is not something that's going to go, is it? It's yeah, going to continue. Yeah, I mean, continue. no one, no one you, I don't think you'll hear any scientist or doctor talking about elimination of COVID mm, right no. now. So it's it's not dissimilar to HIV 40 years ago, mm, you mm. know, that was a new virus and global pandemic and here we are now, we've got a lot less HIV, uh, we've got a lot of tools, but there's still people with debilitating chronic symptoms mm. after HIV. So, you know, it's a, it's a similar thing. Paul is a long COVID sufferer. Associate Professor Anthony Byrne is a respiratory physician at St Vincent's Hospital in Sydney and the co-leader of the long COVID clinic there. Australian adults are now being offered a fifth COVID-19 vaccine. We had a look at why it's time to stop counting COVID shots on February the 9th, and that episode is in your feet. This episode was produced by Flint Duxfield, Chris Dengate and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. Thanks for listening.